not so long ago, in a previous video in the description, we've discussed a somewhat intriguing mystery of various circular objects visible in the night skies. For example, these still mysterious odd radio circles only visible in radio light. And during that video, I mentioned a somewhat recent discovery that has now been officially analyzed and now has a really intriguing study behind it. And you basically see it right here. This is literally an almost perfect circle. A bizarre object discovered not so long ago, also visible in radio light only, but now analyzed in other frequencies as well, and officially referred to as teleos, the Greek word for perfection. And simply because, compared to everything else we've seen so far, this seems to be one of the most perfect circles in the night skies. In terms of the actual circularity, it's approximately 96%. But because this is such a bizarre discovery, and because this is literally the most perfect circle astronomers have seen in a very long time, I figured it deserves its own video because this is a somewhat unusual mystery. And so in this video, let's discuss a little bit more about Teleos and what exactly it probably is, and of course discuss what we know and what we don't know about it. But in a nutshell, right now, it's believed to be some kind of a supernova remnant. Or essentially, a remnant from a star exploding thousands of years ago and producing some kind of an expanding shell. Although the problem is that it kind of looks nothing like other supernova remnants, many of which have been studied before. For example, here is what the famous Crab Nebula looks like, which represents one of the most well-studied supernova remnants in existence. But as you can see, it looks nothing like a circle and also contains a bunch of different tendrils, with most of these tendrils actually formed as a result of a very powerful pulsar in the center. This is also known as the Crab Pulsar. There should be a video in the description that talks about this object in more detail. And so normally, supernova remnants create these beautiful diffuse structures and very often with a lot of different deformations. And that's because as a typical star explodes, it does not explode into empty space. Normally, it contains a lot of gas around it, the interstellar gas, that the expanding shell starts to interact with, which then ends up producing different shapes. At the same time, different supernova remnants are also affected by various magnetic fields which further change their shape over time. But because in a typical supernova remnant, there's just so much material interacting all at once, quite a lot of these emissions are also visible in a lot of different frequencies. Yet surprisingly, this particular object was only detected in radio light. This was by using ASCAP, an enormous network of telescopes located in Australia, that actually produced a really, really detailed survey a few years back. There should be a video in the description talking about that as well. And so here, by using the data from these radio telescopes, completely by accident, researchers discovered this somewhat bizarre circle. But we don't really know much about it. We don't actually even know the exact distance. And so based on several different methods, researchers realized that either this object is pretty close to us, specifically about 7200 light years away, or much farther away at approximately 25,000 light years. Which means that either it's really small, only 45 light years across, or really large at 156 light years. And that's because it doesn't really produce a lot of other emissions, and so trying to figure out how far away this is currently is super difficult. Which also makes its origin story very different as well, because depending on its actual size, it might have been produced by something entirely different. But I guess first, the main question here is, how unusual is this? Well, as we've discussed in that previous video about the unusual circles around us, other supernova remnants have been discovered that also seem to appear kind of circular. For example, SNR J0624-6948 kind of resembles a circle too, as does the object known as MC CNR J0509-6731. Although in this case, neither one is a perfect circle. This one actually looks more like an egg. But even the most famous supernova known to us, SN1987A, the most studied supernova in recent times, kind of resembles a circular object too. Although obviously here it's a little bit more oval in shape. But really in comparison, this is just so much more circular. As I mentioned, it's about 95% circle. And nothing so perfect has ever been seen before. And so the obvious question here is to figure out how could something like this form and why do we not see this more often? Well, first of all here, researchers had to confirm that this is something that's actually moving and expanding and something that possibly is a supernova remnant. And that part was pretty easy. 
and you can actually sort of see why. There is a small deformation in the bottom left corner. And this seems to be some kind of an extended radio emission, suggesting that this part is currently interacting with something else, specifically the interstellar medium, as it's expanding away from the center. Which is of course the confirmation that was needed to establish that this is an expanding object. But based on the overall emissions coming from this object, and based on what's known as the spectral index, researchers believe that there are two possibilities. Either this is something that's super young, which is why it's possibly small, or something that's really old, which is why it would be so big. It also surprisingly is extremely dim. Even in radio light, it's barely visible in all of the other frequencies, including optical light. But if it's expanding and if this is a remnant, why does it not have any of those additional features like other remnants? Well, one possible explanation is that this basically exploded in the middle of nowhere. In other words, there seems to be nothing here, no gas, no interstellar medium, and nothing to interact with. It really exploded somewhere in the middle of empty space, possibly somewhere below the disk of the galaxy, where we do expect the density to be much lower. And if that's the case, this object is very large and very far away, as previously mentioned, over 25,000 light years away from us. And here in this scenario, this would be a typical type 1a supernova, or basically the explosion of a white dwarf that usually creates a massive, super bright emission that destroys the entire white dwarf, leaving nothing behind. And so the remnant in this case is expanding into this super smooth, empty space. And because there's a tiny bit of interstellar medium in the bottom left corner, it's producing these additional emissions. But there is an alternative explanation, actually more than one. It's also possible that this space is empty because the star that used to exist here, or basically the star that went supernova, was very, very powerful. Maybe even something similar to a typical Wolf Rhea star. And these stars produce so many emissions before they explode, or basically produce so much solar wind, that in theory it can completely clear up an entire area up to 100 light years across. And so here this cavity could have been formed by the star that exploded, with the explosion then traveling through this empty space that was previously cleared by the star. And the additional emissions we're seeing in the bottom left corner might be some of the ancient materials from the star itself. And while the additional explanation here also tackles the idea behind different stages of supernova. And you can sort of see these five stages right here. The first stage is the free expansion of the ejecta following the supernova, but the second stage involves a kind of a sweeping mechanism that starts to pick up a lot of this shock gas and starts to move it away from the center in a very certain way. Here this is sometimes referred to as the set off phase, where the main driving force is really the pressure from the hot gas inside the supernova remnant, with the gas itself acting like a blast wave driven by the pressure and the temperature inside the remnant. Now this is not a perfect circle and still contains a lot of instability inside, but in this case, maybe there was just not enough material, which is why this remnant looks a little bit different. And so because in this stage there doesn't seem to be any optical light, and the supernova remnant is invisible in anything but radio light, it potentially suggests this set off phase. Or maybe we're just looking at this from a different angle, and instead some kind of an elongated object, but we're actually just looking at it from top down, which is not so different from what we're seeing around SN1987A in the Large Magellanic Cloud. Here it's circular because of the angle of perspective. We're basically just looking at it in a way where it appears to be a circle. And so here maybe we're also looking at it from perfectly top-down perspective, so it appears to be a circle. And because in this case the remnant is usually expanding along the magnetic fields, we might be just looking directly down these magnetic field lines, which seem to be directly along the line of sight. And in this case, this would explain why this object seems to be so faint in radio light, and why we don't actually see a lot of polarization. In other words, maybe we're just looking at this object directly from the top. Or, alternatively, this has also been suggested to be a special type of a supernova, with some sources suggesting that, occasionally, type 1a or type 1ax supernova can cause the white dwarf to explode very differently and might actually create a very symmetrical, almost perfect remnant, simply based on the way the explosion happens and the way it evolves. And so in this case, because this remnant seems to lack certain features such as these unusual formations referred to as ears you see on the outskirts, in this case one of the additional explanations 
suggests that this was just a unique Type 1A X supernova, a rare Type 1 explosion we've only seen a couple of times before. I think there's a video in the description that talks about one of the most recent ones. And so, because this particular supernova seems to be so different from everything else, right now we have quite a few reasonable explanations. There doesn't seem to be anything extraordinary yet, and nothing that requires new physics. But because there are a few scenarios that make sense, only additional observations using different telescopes and using different wavelengths can actually tell us exactly what's happening. And because unlike other supernova remnants, here Teleo seems to be kind of dim and very difficult to detect, these additional observations have to be done with very sensitive, high resolution telescopes and instruments that will be able to resolve exactly what's happening. For example, by discovering the exact expansion velocity, we'll definitely be able to tell how far away and how large this object is. Right now, current observations are not very accurate. But all we know, this is still a pretty exciting object, and an object that has quite a few reasonable, acceptable explanations. We just don't really know exactly which one is right. So is this a perfect circle because it's basically in the middle of nowhere and very far away from us? Is this a perfect circle because this is the second stage of a typical powerful supernova? Or are we just looking at the circle from a very specific angle, and this is just a typical supernova, but observed from the top? And so right now there's no direct answer, but I'm sure researchers will discover exactly what this is in the next few years. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on these mysterious circles all over the place in one of the videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.